A year after Russia invaded Ukraine, the aftershocks are still reverberating around the world, from commodity markets to local markets. High costs of staples, fuel and fertilizer are worsening global hunger, which was already deteriorating from the COVID-19 pandemic. More than 140 million people relied on aid from the World Food Program in 2022, a new high. That tops the record WFP set in 2021. When World Food Program sets records, it's not a good thing for the world. We have been setting record after record after record. The war and COVID have created a compound crisis with one factor spilling into another. Take food production, for example. Wheat, corn, and sunflower oil from Russia and Ukraine supplied a significant chunk of global markets before the war. That's the first factor. A lot of the world's staples come from just a few places. Less than 10 countries make up like 80, 90% of exports of these commodities. And less than 5% hold like 80, 90% of the stocks, reserves of these commodities. So when anything happens to any one of them, we feel the pain around the world. One thing that happened before the war was bad weather in a few of those exporting countries. Those kinds of weather extremes are becoming more common with climate change. Bad weather causes bad harvests, which lead to price increases. They were already near record highs when the war broke out on February 24, 2022. The surges in food prices we saw starting February last year came after a year before of already surging prices. So it was a surge uh, on top of a previous surge. Energy markets also had a surge on top of a surge. Prices were already rising as the world recovered from COVID and raised demand. The war shook up oil and gas markets because Russia is a major producer. That raises food prices in two ways. First, it takes energy to make and transport food. Second, natural gas is key to making nitrogen fertilizer. The process takes a lot of energy, and it also uses natural gas as a main ingredient. Fertilizer prices also went up because Russia and Belarus were top suppliers, and both are under sanctions. The constraints to the mobility of fertilizers plus increasing natural gas increase significantly the prices of fertilizers, which at the maximum went four times higher than in the previous year. The high cost of fertilizer is dragging out the impacts of the war into the next growing season. It means crops cost more to grow, so farmers grow less. That spreads the war's effects from Ukraine all the way to Asia. The major concern outside of the war is the issue on rice, which is a consequence, an indirect consequence of the increasing price of fertilizers because of the war. Growing rice uses a lot of fertilizer. Rice prices are rising because farmers are growing less. And the impacts don't stop there. But we've seen some more visible effects, even though that average fertilizer use is as low as in Africa. Many governments in sub-Saharan Africa subsidize farmers' fertilizer costs. That buffer is being taken away because governments could no longer afford uh, to keep up the subsidies. So farmers will grow less in some chronically food insecure countries. High fertilizer costs are one part of a cascading crisis in these countries. Many also subsidize the cost of food and fuel and those costs are crushing their budgets. These governments already took on a lot of debt to deal with COVID, so budgets are reaching the breaking point. More than half of the world's low-income countries are on the brink of default or have already done so. The value of their currencies has shriveled, which makes matters worse because anything they import costs more. If you are a poor country, if you have high debt, if you happen to import your food, fuel, and fertilizer, you're still in big trouble. And the effects radiate out to prices in local markets, making food harder to afford. The fallout from Russia's invasion of Ukraine is leaving people hungry far from the battlefield. Just because of the war in Ukraine, we calculated an increase in 10.7 million people more chronically undernourished. WFP says 349 million people in 79 countries are struggling to get enough food, and more than 900,000 are close to famine. Prices have backed off a bit from last year's record highs, but there's little comfort in that. Yes, prices are coming down at the global level, but no, it doesn't mean that life has been sorted out and everything is great in the countries where we work. We are definitely not 
out of the woods. The factors that created the crisis are still there. A few countries grow the bulk of the food, climate disasters are a growing risk, energy prices are still high, and the war in Ukraine is still going on.